I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. And uh, uh, before we get started on the next item, I'd like to uh, again uh, begin by introducing each of us. And I'll start out as introducing myself at Theobaldus Town Manly Supervisor. Hi, I'm Sarah Bollinger, Town Counselor. John Deere, Town Counselor. Elaine Denton, Town Counselor. Good evening, Karen Green, Deputy Supervisor. Caitlin Creasel, Town Counselor. Heather Waters, Town Counselor. Very good. And along with the uh, rest of our town officials, we have Randy Capriati, Director of Code Enforcement Officer. Okay. Uh, we have uh, Chief uh, Mike Kroll. Uh, Highway Superintendent Rob Cushing. Town Attorney Tim Fertesky. Town Engineer Doug Miller. Town Manager Ann Oot. And of course, Town Clerk Allison Weber. Thank you, everyone. Um, and we're, we'll move on to um, item two. Uh, which I will admit I'm not familiar with. And I'm wondering, John, is this something you're going to present? <laughs> yep. So uh, in honor of having Indigenous Peoples Day on our calendar this year, we wanted to just do a little, a very short land acknowledgement uh, that we put together and that um, we've had uh, a number of people review. And so I'm just going to go ahead and read that. So the town of Manlius has a rich history that we all work diligently to preserve and recognize every day. It is important for us to be fully considerate of those people originally living on this land, those that were removed by force to make way for others. We would like to officially acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the Onondaga Nation, a member of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and honor their stewardship of the land. As we look to build, to, as we look to building our comprehensive plan, Manlius commits to learning the deep history of the land and its resources, ensuring indigenous voices are a part of the conversation. We will be partnering with local organizations and activists to center these cultural traditions and knowledge. While we cannot always reverse historic wrongs, we want to recognize them and endeavor to find ways of healing as we continue this journey together. Oh, very good. Well, well said, and I'm glad you clarified all that for me. Very, very nice. Um, so uh, do, we're just acknowledging that. We don't need to, to make it. It's, it is simply acknowledging that you know, we are on uh, you know, indigenous land and, you know, uh, in moving forward through especially the comprehensive planning process, we want to learn more and, and better understand that relationship. Excellent. Okay. Thank you, John. Appreciate the clarification. And uh, next on the item is the approval of the minutes, September 23rd, 2020. Do I have a motion? Mr. Supervisor, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of September 23rd. I would second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? And carried. Very good. And uh, next item is approval of the abstract number 19. Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to approve abstract number 19 in the amount of $296,199.77. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And carried. Very good. All right. Uh, next item, and it's uh, 636. Not bad is the continuation of the public hearing of the federal fire contract. Again, uh, we did this because of the publishing changes that were made in the interim of the first uh, public hearing, or when we opened the public hearing. So we kept it open, um, just this one more meeting. Uh, so I believe we've uh, addressed everything with that. And um, unless anyone had any questions or comments, we could make a motion to come out of the public hearing. Um, I'll make a motion to come out of the public hearing. This is Sarah. Okay. I'll second it. It's Heather. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry. All right. Uh, the next item would be to um, uh, make a motion uh, to approve the Fadwell fire budget. Mr. Supervisor, I'd be happy to make a motion to approve the Fayetteville 
um, fire protection and emergency ambulance service. No, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed and carried. Okay. All right. And um, okay, moving right along. Uh, again, Sarah, this was uh, the commercial zoning classification changes that we've been discussing, um, modifying the town of Malia's commercial zone. I did notice that we did get the, re uh, the county's report on this too. I think that just came. Yes, we got it today. Yeah, so that's been acknowledged, but uh, why don't you uh, uh, explain where we are with this now? All right, so we would, the planning process committee has prepared prepared revised zoning code for consideration of the board. There were three reasons that motivated us to take on this project. The current codes were written by different people and some were very detailed and some were very vague. Um, the possible uses had developed over time and had not anticipated all the possible things that are now um, facing our co director of codes enforcement to imp uh, enforce. And we wanted to make our codes easier for residents and developers to use. Each zoning district is now written with a standard template to the purpose and intent, followed by design principles, followed by permitted uses. In addition, the planning process committee has made a chart. And one of the changes um, since the last meeting is that that chart has been just reformatted to be easier to use. The draft local law as presented will be amended based on public comment since the last meeting to remove the proposed transitional business district from the code and to reconsider that in light of other issues um, and perhaps bring it back at a later date. Um, the districts are intended to move along a continuing continuum from the least impactful upon neighboring residents, which is neighborhood shopping, to potentially most impactful, which is industrial. The draft was presented to the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Planning Board. The Planning Board has recommended that the Town Board approve these revisions. And as Supervisor Theobald noted, the proposed law was reviewed by the Onondaga Planning Board and they had no suggestions for changes. So at this time, we would like to hold the public hearing open because the uh, new law is not, the specific details are not written in the new law, but we would plan on closing it next meeting and voting at that time. Very good. Um, Tim, is there anything that uh, you feel needs to be added to this or are we good to go? Nope, I think they're ready to see if there's anybody of, uh, wanting to speak. Okay. Um, I, uh, I don't see anyone in the chat room and we're good on- There are some people in attendees. Do, um, Allison, do you wanna see if any attendees plan to speak about this topic? Sure, absolutely. Uh, if anybody would like to speak tonight, uh, they can just go right into the Q&A function and type their question, or additionally, they could raise their hand. That can be done at any time, uh, but I think would be acknowledged during the public hearing. Right. So anything else, and should we move on? And then we can come, obviously we'll be back next meeting. I don't see anything in the, the Q&A right now. Right. Excellent. And I think, uh, I think all the board has been involved with this as well. You know, Jen, she is, is acknowledging that. So why don't we um, move on now to item seven, uh, which is the... Um, uh, Mr. The Supervisor, let's just uh, let oh. adjourn the meeting until the next meeting, or the, I'm sorry, the hearing until the next meeting. Oh, okay. So I'll make a motion to adjourn the public hearing until October 28th. Okay. And Heather seconding, I see your hand. Yes, I'd like to second that, thank you. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed and carried. Very good, thank you, Sarah and Heather. And now, and thank you, Tim. And now we'll move on to the property tax cap, uh, which is the, um, the all received the override um, uh, local law that uh, Tim has sent out to us. And again, this is, um, really nothing more than a precautionary method, uh, measure. Um, as we have done in the past, our goal is always to stay below the tax cap. Um, as we've noted, it's easier to stay under, under the town budget. It makes it more challenging when you include the districts, which we really don't have a lot of control over. Uh, so we still have a ways to go before we get to the, the final budget, as you all know. And one of the, one of the concerns that uh, we are always worried about is the fact that if we don't override it, 
and we are under the tax cap. Um, and in fact, there's a, uh, from the um, comptroller, they explain it quite uh, clearly in here that uh, in, the, uh, in the event uh, that a government district levies more than the amount allowable under the tax levy limit due to clerical or technical errors. So again, we could say we're under it, but there could be something that comes back later on in front of comptrollers. Uh, the local government must place the excess amount in a reserve in accordance with the requirements as prescribed by the comptroller. These funds and interest earned must be used to offset the tax levy in the following fiscal year. So we can't use those funds to reduce the, 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 uh, the tax cap now. And so basically we're penalizing our tax, our, our residents <laughs> to, uh, locking this into a uh, interest earned account. Um, and further, if upon post audit, the state comptroller finds that a gov local government levy tax is in excess of the allowable limit, the local government must place an amount equal to the excess in the reserve. So that really ties us all up. It's sort of like penalizing us by penalizing us more <laughs> you know, by locking that up. But Tim, is that is that pretty understandable, clear? Do you want to clarify it even more, if you could? No, I, th I think that you've explained it. Um, the the tax cap override requires a sixty percent vote of the town board, just so everybody knows that um, it's not a majority vote; it's a sixty percent vote. And um, you know, it's something that has traditionally been done in the town, so. Um, it wouldn't be the first time we overrode the tax cap. In fact, I think we've done it every year for the last, um, as far, as I, can, yeah, as, far as I can remember. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. does anybody have any questions for me? I, I do. So when we figure out the final budget, we'll have our final number on the tax cap. Is that correct? So we'll know that number before yeah. approving yeah, yeah yes. we yeah, once yeah elaine once we go through the preliminary budget which i will propose tonight um and then we'll you know work on that again <laughs> to get to the final budget and once we get to the final budget between preliminary and final we hope to get the rates uh and the levies below the tax cap at that time so that's our goal and um we hope to do so yeah. And then that's, that's the time when um, uh, we'll see how, how it ends up. You know. So, And then my other question is, I know the process to override it is to have a public hearing, which we are doing tonight. Um, but then there's no requirement or no timeline besides passing the override before we pass the budget. So we could, so once we have that, those calculations, those figures, if we know we're going to go over, we can still pass the override before that. That's oh. correct. Final vote. Okay. Yep. So yes, Melanie, you're you're right. Tonight we have to hold a public hearing um, because that's what the law requires for a local law, and um, there's no there's no requirement that a vote take place tonight. Um, but that that's going to be up to the town board how they want to handle it. So we could, um, uh, if we're ready to uh, move into the uh, public hearing, we could uh, ask to waive the reading of the public notice. So move, Mr. Supervisor. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those carried. Very good. And now a motion to open the public hearing. I'll move to open the public hearing, please. I'll second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. And as usual, uh, in the uh, we ask anyone who has comments that they, um, uh, since the board is pretty much, we already talked about it, we now leave it up to the residents to talk about it and to ask us any questions that they might have regarding this. Uh, so we'll give some time. I know, um, Allison, there's sometimes some delay between uh, us talking and them getting the information. So uh, we have... Um, 
the Q&A, and we have uh, Facebook, I believe, that's, again, still available for that. So. Just remember, I can't monitor Facebook, so um, if someone else can keep their eye on that. We do have a question in the Q&A. Oh, okay. What is the likelihood that we will exceed the cap? That's a very good question. <laughs> um, it all depends on uh, what we're able to do with the budget as far as um, as far as uh, the expenditures that need to be met and what kind of revenue we'll be getting, which um, it's becoming less and less from, as we all know from the state, our property taxes as the most uh, of our revenue. Um, so we're, the likelihood is sort of unknown at this point. That's another reason why we do the over right now because we're still in the budgeting process. Uh, does anybody else wanna add anything to that? Well, uh, yeah, I'd, um... but no, Elaine, you go ahead, you go first. Well, the only thing I was gonna say, cause I had that same question as well is when like how often has have we gone over and it and we most likely haven't. I believe the last time we went over was 2016, if, if that's correct. correct. Yep. Yeah. It's um, well, <laughs> and again the tax cap. I think if it was that was the year, we were at um, like 0.68 or some ridiculous number that um, they held us to 2016. Yeah. It was 2017. It was the tax cap was you know it's two percent or inflation. And last year was the first time it was in 2% since 2011. Uh, so it's very, if, if it was around 0.68, like it was in 2017, it would be very much more difficult. The tax cap for 2021 is 1.56. So it's within reach, you know, it's within reach and it's what the finance committee and the board is, we're just gonna have to really work hard to get that down there. Yeah, I'll get that below the 1.56. Um, and one of the what I wanted to add was that um, the I'm on the finance committee uh, with Sarah, and we've been meeting with Ed and Ann um, intermittently over the last several weeks, including yesterday as well as last Friday. And um, the being a new town board member, I feel like I'm kind of learning this process along with maybe the constituents and people in the community that are paying attention. And it is pretty complicated how all these pieces come together. But once you understand it, it, it actually makes a lot of sense. Um, in the funds that the town controls, the, where we, we've collected taxes from the community and we're going to be spending money out of those pools to fund the, the all, pretty much all the things that we're used to, uh, we are able to balance that budget pretty seamlessly. And those amounts, stay below the tax cap. We're able to control that in a very mindful way. The part that's tricky or difficult to forecast and where we really don't have very much control at all um, are the different uh, districts. Is that correct, Anne? So right now we've got, we have the preliminary budget, we're working on the tentative budget, but what we need to wait to hear back on is the are the different amounts that will need to be levied for those districts. Um, an example would be a water district where we're waiting to hear back from the village of Chittenango on how much is that gonna cost because this neighborhood is not connected to the, the plumbing and the water in Manlius, they tied to Chittenango's which was much closer. But because they're town of Manlius residents, we collect those taxes and then we give it to Chittenango. We don't have that number yet. And we don't have any control over what that number is. So because we've, we're pretty much done with the funds that we control and those are all below the tax cap. It's just waiting now to see what those other, um, what those other amounts are going to be. And we don't have control over those. So that's where it's kind of tricky uh, because we can't, we can't necessarily, because we can't control it, we can't say for sure how likely we are to stay under the tax cap or not. I think that we will be able to get there, but we need to see what those numbers are before we can really say for sure. Well said, Kaylin. Sarah, did you want to add, I know we haven't, we'll maybe have more conversation when we get to the preliminary budget, but did you want to 
add anything about that? Um, not at this time. I would just share that I am monitoring Facebook, Allison, and no one has commented there. So I think we can, um, I think we can close, the, make a motion to close the public hearing. Okay. So did you make that motion? Sir? I did make that in a motion. <laughs> okay. I'll second that motion. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. And carried. Okay. Uh, so now if, if you are interested board, um, if we want to make a motion to uh, accept the local law to override the, uh, I was going to say public hearing, the tax cap, uh, we could do that at this time as well. I would like to um, consider tabling it until we have the final numbers, since we don't have a requirement to vote on it uh, before we have those. How does that just with what I've learned in the last couple of weeks, meeting with Ann and Ed and Sarah, the um, the numbers that Aliana, sweetheart, I'm on my town board call. You can't come in here screaming. Sorry. <laughs> the um, the numbers that were, are coming in, and we get our whole budget done, and we submit it. The comptroller's office will then double check everything to make sure that we have that done, and we have it right. Because the issue is that if we inadvertently were to get a figure or an equation wrong, and then we were to go over the tax cap, and we didn't pass this law, we'd be in a really difficult situation where we'd have to go to the voters and get a vote to, to manage that at that time. Um, we discussed this a little bit yesterday, but I'm not recalling if, that, if it was possible to get all of that done before the end of the year. Um, to guarantee we'd be able to do all of that before the end of the year. I see. That the I see. staff call her double checked everything. It, what I did learn yesterday, since I knew that this was going to be coming up, I got some more information for us that, um, that, the, that every year the town board in prior years passed the law to mm -hmm. override the tax cap and then it didn't go over. Didn't go over right. and then did in fact pass the law to repeal it if they didn't go over. So right. they didn't just like leave it lingering. So that's what, if we did in fact pass this, if that's what we decided to do, and then we don't go over, then we do repeal the law. Okay. And it's not our intention to go over, it's really a safety net so that if we do, um, if we end up having to, or you know, just by human error, we end up doing it inadvertently, then that would be the protection so that we could do what we needed to do to, to continue to fund the government without there being all these administrative hassles to do so. I think that's really helpful because we, um, I think the big headline is always that we're overriding the tax cap that we set a law to. And I know that every year you've tried to, um, as I remember last year, sitting and listening to the town board, um, uh, make sure that you communicated just these facts, that the law that was passed by the state Senate in, in, in 2011 or whatever um, in New York State also came with a bunch of money for the for the state for local municipalities and whatever but it created maybe this sort of technical issue mm -hmm. um and that nobody likes an unfunded mandate but it's also about just this process um so i'm glad that we that we've had this conversation so i hearing that i i really do feel comfortable then um mr supervisor um, making a motion to, to oh. vote on it i would still like to wait i mean I, oh, okay. I would like to get more information going through this process the first time because again there's no there's no deadline i don't well there we is a deadline. On the it deadline, now. The deadline would be at the end of the of the final budget because even at the end of the final budget elaine it may appear we're under the tax cap and if we don't overwrite it and then we send the information in and the comptroller finds a technical error by whoever or whatever then we have not overridden it and then we're going to be penalized so this is really a safety valve, a safety cap. As far, and, and it's very, I, I get it, it's very convoluted, it's very confusing. The comptrollers, um, you know, they had to go by what the governor told them to do, okay? And it's, it's not easy, but, it, and, and, I, and Heather, I, I get where, where you're coming from too. I mean, all the municipalities that I know do override it. Um, and uh, and that, that's, and everyone gets, because it's misunderstood, I think Caitlin explained it very well as far as the precautionary measures that were going. So 
Uh, normal, some people actually override the tax cap when they do their organizational meeting in January. <laughs> That's how. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, we can you know, that may not be a bad idea. Well, Elaine, <laughs> it looks like Elaine, it does every municipality yeah. do it? No, I don't believe so. I was wondering the same thing because if every municipality overrides the tax cap, why do we have the tax cap? Um, <laughs> and when it first came out, it did seem like a lot of them did, and now less and less of them are because they because they are staying under the tax cap. So I didn't do all the research, so I was really interested in seeing, it, especially like well, especially in New York State, like how many mis municipalities have overrided the, the tax cap. For, but I haven't found all that data yet. Well, but, um, Elaine, it's funny you bring that up because up here in Central New York, um, I would say, especially in Onondaga County, you've got really some tremendous municipalities that have kept tax rates, tax levies below below 2%. And the maybe downstate <laughs> where it's a little more confusing, uh, they had a tendency to go above that, that 2%. Um, so one of the arguments was, well, when they put the 2%, now these municipalities are gonna say, hey, look, we can go up to 2% now, <laughs> you know, where they were always below. So you're right, it, why do we have this? Again, it's not because of us, I can tell you that, you know, um, but as a safety factor, I think it's still important that um, that we stay ahead of the curve on this and e even though we, we hope to stay below it anyway. You know. If it is just an insurance policy that doesn't cost us anything, right, and that's basically what we're saying, I understand that logic very much so, um, but I, I think it's really I think that it's definitely important. Maybe we could um, highlight and when we, when we um, on the web or something, make sure we produce like a little explanation that's not in Greek um, <laughs> to the taxpayers. We'll try to summarize that, right, Ann? <laughs> I think we can get something out there, Heather, to help try to explain it, you know. Um, you know, now that, you know, Caitlin's been in the middle of it and she's, it's, it's been a learning <laughs> process, hasn't it? So, yeah. Yeah, and, it, uh, Sarah, and Sarah more involved now than in the past. So, the um, it is interesting because, like, for me too, I was like, well, if we're not going to go above the tax cap, why would we vote to go above the tax cap? It's a perfectly legitimate question, and I asked Ed and Ann a lot of questions about it. But once I once I understood that um, that it doesn't like it, I, it can be interpreted, I think um, by you know, people that aren't as familiar with this budget process, which probably most of the community isn't, that we're kind of just saying, well, if we want to go above it, we're going to go of it, being kind of blasé or um, or cavalier about people's tax dollars. But it's if that's a misinterpretation, it's really more a safeguard if uh, if we happen to go over inadvertently or if we need to go over because we simply don't have the funds that we need to meet our obligations. That's well put. Well put. You go ahead. Mr. Supervisor, may I, I just want to say, um, you know, each year we have discussed this and have always found that it's the prudent thing to do. And indeed, it is an insurance policy. However, this year, with the uncertainty of the revenue from the state, I think it's all the more important um, that we pass this override this year again. We have taken that into consideration, Karen, in balancing the budget. Um, we've we've incorporated um, and in very conservatively so what we expect to see from the state, and it, we've included the the possibility that we'll receive a reduction in funds in what we are appropriating. So, in where we might have really relied on the money and included that in the budget in years past, we did not do that this year, and it at least for the funds that we control and the expenses that we control, the bu budget st should still be balanced at this point. Heather, you saw the question Q&A that they're asking you to answer, I think, is that right? Oh, I'm sorry, I just, I, maybe I just went ahead and just said, oh, we could answer this live, trying to be helpful, but that must have been confusing. Um, I wasn't sure if we had actually um, answered the questions from Joseph um, Messinio first. So I had, I'm sorry, I had typed that answer to him um, with regard to water districts. And this is the second question from Ms. Benson also relates to water districts. 
districts are one of the things that are incorporated in the tax levy, but are not set by the town. They're set by what happens in the district. And that's, those are the things that are hard to predict at this time and why there's a danger of possibly having a number that is outside of the tax cap um, because this is not. But the question specifically related to current water district as opposed to future, this would only apply to water districts that are already formed and already work, already functioning. This would not impact by any future water district. That's correct. And also, um, Joseph Missinio asked, what is the likelihood that we would exceed the cap? Did we already answer that? Yes, we did. And the fiscal year end date, mm -hmm. the end of the calendar year, correct? The end yep. of the calendar year, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think super. Elaine was raising her hand. She had a question. I, had a question. So, I just had a comment more. Um, like, so if we do provide the information about um, why we potentially have to go over the tax cap, just to provide that information, I think that would just educate um, voters rather than um, mm -hmm. vote. Uh, I mean, I know that we could potentially pass it as a caution, mm -hmm. but to pass it as a, hey, this is what happened this year or potentially next year. Um, and this is why we have to do that. It just provides a little bit more education um, yeah. to our residents. Yesterday about producing like a little video and just putting it up on the website, um, like a little, couple little vignettes just to give people like, this is what the fund balance means. This is how it's used. We talked about like a little stick figure, but that's probably above our. <laughs> or we could just volunteer to have you in front of a whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it certainly uh, would be an education process that I think would um, we sh we could get out there and and, and help explain this because it <laughs> Elaine you you asked the perfect question why do we have the tax cap if we always go under it or why do we oh, go ahead Tim you want to add something so just a couple things um, from a historical standpoint the uh, the tax cap the why are the special districts in the tax cap. Originally, there was actually a, a big debate, conflict over that question. And um, the Attorney General's office took the position that they shouldn't be in the, um, in the budget and under the tax cap. The Controller's office took the position that it should. So we were struggling with that for the first two years. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, the Controller's opinion was the, was the prevailing opinion that it should be under the tax cap. But it really doesn't make a lot of sense because we, as everybody has said, we don't control those, those um, the numbers that come from special districts. Uh, the second point I wanted to make is that why does, why, why is it so easy to do um, override the tax cap? Uh, if, if the state legislature and the governor did put in a 60% requirement, which makes it a little more difficult than a majority vote on the tax cap. Um, for school districts, it's, um, my recollection is they actually have, if they're going to override the tax cap, they have to bring it before the, the people of the school district to make that vote. So um, from, a, from the pound perspective, ours is a little bit less, um, uh, less rigid than um, what it would be for a school district. Uh, that, and that's probably because school district portions of your taxes are three times the town portion of the tax. That I think people, it's a referendum, right? That they would have to do to? Yeah, yep. Um, the, I, and I also wanted to address a point Caitlin made in terms of uh, rescinding the tax cap. We did that uh, for my, and Ann, jump in if you, if you remember, but uh, we did that for, I think, two years. And the reason we rescinded the tax cap was there was some special tax that people wouldn't be getting if we overrode the tax cap. Once we figured out we were under the tax cap, we, we actually came back and rescinded the tax cap, I think in two years, if I'm not mistaken. Is, is that right, Ann? That sounds right, yeah. So we don't normally, if we pass the tax cap, we don't go back and um, rescind it usually. Um, there, were, there were reasons why we did it those two years. Could we do it again just because we want to make it clear that we're not going above the tax cap? Sure, but Ed's point, we don't really, the, the difficult part of this is you don't really know if you're going to even, you don't know if you're going over the tax cap because of the calculations that are done and it might, and we might be so close that we might have missed the calculation 
and it goes over. So if you rescinded it before you under before the state controller's office looked at your budget to determine if it was 1.57, then it would be a then you'd have a problem because you you rescinded the override. Could we rescind it after we knew for sure though? I mean, like yeah. Sure. You can we you can rescind it every, every year. We amend it, um, so we can rescind the 2021 uh, year if we'd like to. And remember, Caitlin, we Matt uh, completes the AUD that goes in in April, I believe. You know that's you know that's the the, the fiscal year that the, um, the state is. So he completes all that. So if we really don't know until after the comptroller receives that. To make sure that all our calculations are accurate, to that we did stay under the tax cap. So it could be a, a six month time before we find that, that out that we definitely stayed under. Okay. Like, important to know. Yeah. So I I think I feel comfortable. Only do you want to wait until, or are you okay? Okay. Um. So, Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to make a motion uh, to pass the amendment allowing us to override the tax cap. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right, carried. Okay, very good. Great. So that's local law. What local law was that? Local law is um, 2020 local law property tax cap. It just, I don't know if there's no number on it though, right? Okay, I, so Allison will put a number on it. Yeah, she'll put a number in it, yeah. Okay. Um, right. <laughs> yeah. So very good. Uh, that, that was great conversation. I think it's enlightening for our residents that are that, and we'll get the information out, uh, as as you said, in as plain English as we possibly can, Heather. You know, to get that out there to us. And yeah. this video is recorded, so I would encourage all of us to post it if we have social media pages, and if you get questions on it, um, you could say, you know, the discussion starts at this time. It's about twelve minutes, and it might will provide a lot of context for people. I think. Having the, the Zoom calls and the fact that we're live streaming and recording these, I think it's going to be a good resource for us to be able to direct people to. Um, it is confusing, but this is the most important thing we do all year. So it's, I hope that we can educate the community and get them to be a little bit um, more understanding of this process as complicated as it can be. Yep, I, I, I agree, Fiona. Very good. Thank you, Ed. All right, so we'll move on to the um, uh, town manager's request for proposal communication service. Um, Sarah, you sent this information out to all of us. You want to address this for us and just clarify all of Hi, yes, I believe um, John was going to comment as well. Um, this is an opportunity for the town to engage, to find out if there are candidates to engage to assist us with our communication strategy with the community. Um, yep. so that we can present a more cohesive and timely messaging to our residents. So, John? Yeah, I think the general idea here is right now we, you know, you can, you can tell as Facebook became something that a municipality needed to do, it got handled as the way things normally are when it's not someone's specific job to do this brand new thing. And so, you know, as we look at all of the communications that go out of the town, <clears throat> we would really like to see um, a lot of it being streamlining, understanding best practices, making sure that the messaging is consistent across, uh, you know, each department in the town, making sure that if there's time-saving opportunities, perhaps a template for all of the brochures that a department puts out, that'll save time and keep people who are not maybe technically savvy putting together something and making it as, as easy as possible so that the theming is all there so that people start to really understand, you know, that that nice town of Manlius logo, they can see it and they know immediately, okay, this is something from the town. And to help us with how we, uh, you know, send out emails, how we interact on social media, all stuff like that. So um, I think this is what, what I'm most excited about with this is to see the different um, suggestions that we get from, you know, different folks who are responding to this, um, you know, I'm sure we'll find somebody who's running a one, one or two person shop will be able to give us a good amount of insight and a larger firm that'll have some other ideas. And so our goal here is to streamline communications uh, to make them as effective uh, and reliable as possible. Could I, I'd like to add one thing to that too. I've mm -hmm. talked to other municipalities about this who have this type of service. <clears throat> and I know that the, um, uh, the one uh, town supervisor relies heavily on this individual <laughs> or group to help 
communicate, uh, you know, information to the public, whether it's in, in the newspaper, on behalf of the board and, and, and uh, to the residents. And uh, as since, you know, this is a part-time position, it's hard to concentrate on all of that as, as well and, and put the burden on always maybe my town manager, town clerk and administrative assistant <laughs> to edit all the time. So I, I think that uh, this, is, this would be helpful uh, to us as board members as well. Important. Thank you. So I would like to make a motion that we authorize, uh, I guess, authorize the supervisor to release this request for letters of interest. Um, and uh, so I would make that motion. And I'll second. All in. Uh, Mr. Supervisor, may I just add one comment? Um, you know, I uh, did have some, a few conversations with some of our department heads and getting their thoughts, I think, you know, it's important. Um, and I know a number of years as we meet with the CRC, the Critical Response Committee, um, it has been brought up about an emergency manager. And since we're looking at this, I was wondering if there's any way we could incorporate that um, into this potential proposal. Well, that's... And I know you've been in those conversations with the CRC and, or with the, yeah. With Kevin, I think the chief could probably answer that much more fluently than I could. I mean, I've got my opinion of the differences between the two, um, but I don't think they would run parallel. Go ahead, Mike. Do you have an opinion on the difference between the communication, um, I guess? I I definitely think there's a correlation between the two because, you know, we use social media often. Um, we're, we're way behind. The police department's way behind on that. We have a Facebook account, but we, we haven't explored some of the other avenues. Um, I just had discussions recently with the command staff where we really want to expand on that. And uh, honestly, the, the primary goal in being able to communicate with, with our residents is really during an emergency situation. So uh, I, I would love and, and certainly police department is an advocate of having somebody that can control not only all of the emergency response protocols that need to be reviewed, CRC, but you know, a big part of CRC is community notifications during an emergency. And it, it can be critical to make, make sure that information is, uh, is put out in an effective and efficient manner to let our residents know when, when there is an emergency. So they do have a, they do have a direct correlation. And I've, I've always proposed in, in the past that that emergency uh, coordinator position would be controlled by the, by the town, um, but it would work directly not only with the police department and the town, but with all of our fire departments. Oh. And it would be like a part-time position. So um, I think that you could effectively do, do both. Uh, that, that's my, just my opinion. And um, so in hearing that, it's really interesting, and I can see it does sound like there's, a, there's something that could be added to the, to the uh, request that would include community um, emergency or, or community uh, emergency communication coordination or something that doesn't leave out the fact that a review of emergency messaging is part of what this person would understand, but, but the whole uh, emergency coordination job sounds a little different. Um, and I do think that it could be, uh, I'd be in favor of looking at it ahead of the budget being um, finalized if, if people really felt strongly about that, especially Karen, if you're saying it's, a, it's been something that's been discussed for a long time. But what's great is that you have um, these two bodies, if there could be recommendations that come from, from these sources that, you, that we have having conversations, I think that would be you know, very welcome, uh, of course, with the leadership too, knowing things that they want to, how they'd want to define something like that. But I think it's different than this particular role. This particular role is like, I'm happy to, you know, share that um, we'll have news soon coming from the tree commission about a grant that was received. So I'm doing a draft of the press release, which is great, but I have a template that I use. And I would like to not just use one that I think everybody says seems okay, but rather have something that's standardized um, for the town and that we have a style guide 
and we know um, our the style guide would include things like the way that we use um, capitalization and all, all those things. We need we need those things in communication professionals um, for both internal comms and external comms um, can help us with that. Elaine, did you have something you wanted to add? Okay. Yeah, I, and you know, it's um, Heather. We I think Sarah, we spoke about this a little bit where. We actually, in the past, had um, talked about sharing some of this type of communication service with the three villages and the departments and emergency uh, that would uh, may also fall under the, the CRC portion of it. Uh, so this may be a little bigger than what we're <laughs> looking at in general terms of just a communication uh, marketing expert here. But uh, but you know, let's we can start the ball rolling. I think with what you've um, drafted. And then we can uh, we can you know mo uh, mold it along the way as we move along. You know we could possibly do that. And of and course, I think, a lot of it comes down to dollars and cents too. You know? <laughs> and that was why um, you know we put something together that looks like this is because you know we don't know what we don't know. So by yeah. having a professional being able to say like, hey, your process is decent, but we can make these modifications or it's a terrible process. Let's start from scratch. Like that was the whole goal here. So any of those other outlying things about communication, you know, hopefully once we, you know, find somebody who's interested and we can ask them some questions, we'll be able to see, you know, would they be able to help us move on, you know, coordinating between all these different departments. Well, what I hear too is that it's the difference between a nice to have and a need to have. And what I, what I sort of hear is that Karen and, you know, the chief are, are saying also too, we, we really need, this is a priority to have sort of best practices in place for this kind of, for the emergency, emergency communications. So if that's the case, I really, you know, I, I, it would be great. I would like as a, I'd like to call for and, and support, you know, some articulation of what those needs could really be in the shape of that, however it comes to be, whether it's, um, and what I, one question I want clarification about is, if we put this request out there, can we update does the actual hiring process have to reflect exactly that request or could this person be hired with, you know? So that's why it's a letter of interest is we want to get, hear back from people of what their perceptions are as professionals in the field. Um, but just in terms of clarifying the outcome of this discussion, the draft that's per currently posted will add one additional bullet saying emergency communication, and then that will get people thinking of, well, what would I do about emergency communication? They can give us response in their letter of intent, and then we can follow through when we actually have people we're talking to and involve Chief Crowell and um, all the department's heads actually in interviewing that, that process of, of what is the final uh, scope of work. And Heather, I might be able to help out as we move along. I've had a, a file on emergency service coordinator type communicator for quite a while. We just have sort of not pursued it, you know, because as you said, it's, it hasn't, um, there's been other things that have stressed more importantly than that at this point. And budgeting is another part of it. Honestly, I imagine too that this would fall under um, sort of intermunicipal cooperation and the kind of um, stuff that you know we could search for support for and also um yeah just and I'll, i just think that it seems like it's some also foundation support so i'd like to be helpful in this regard if i could be absolutely sure so, i'm a little confused just to clarify because with the communication um proposal we have now i'm a little confused like uh, i'm a graphic designer so uh, i have a little bit of background to add this um, emergency management into this um, proposal, I, does that fit is my question. So I, mean, I, would not, I would not call it management. I think emergency management needs to stay with the professionals. Right. Yeah. It would simply be a communication template, that kind of thing, more like the look of things so that people would know what was real from the town and what was just some random person on Facebook saying something, those kinds of those kinds of tools. But does that already, isn't that what we're already asking for? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And this is a separate, and, and I think what's being raised in bringing up this topic is the separate other need okay. that we want to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay, good. And, and I think you made a motion, Sarah? I did. And John seconded it. John did second. And then we, oh, that's right. We had a conversation. So uh, any other discussion? 
Okay. You're going to add that bullet, Sarah? I am adding that bullet. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carry. All right. Very good. Thank you, Sarah, and everyone else. Again, this is a topic that um, I'm glad we're having tonight. Okay. So item nine is the, oh, okay. This is a, Heather, I'll probably pass this off to you. This is on the comprehensive planning services that you yes. have the information to us on. Yes. Um, so this is, I want to thank Sarah Bollinger. Um, Sarah Bollinger is a, is really, you know, my, is the co-chair in all of these activities and we should probably officially be made such. Um, and she um, helped draft this. This is the request for letters of interest for comprehensive planning services. So we are looking to execute an agreement with a qualified municipal planning firm for the 2021 fiscal year. And we want this relationship to continue into the future fiscal years. Um, we've engaged resident volunteers and we've organized uh, three listening sessions, one of which is this Sunday. You'll be receiving a notice soon um, as a quick reminder, but it's uh, our history featuring our town historian, Barbara Rivet from 3 to 4.30 p.m. on Sunday. Um, and we had our natural environment session in September, and we'll be talking about the economy with um, our colleagues from the Chamber of Manlius, uh, Greater, Greater, Cham Greater Chamber of Commerce for the town of Manlius. And on, on November 22nd, we are looking for, um, you know, a firm to help us do a few different things. The scope of work will include a schedule and a rough budget for planning elements uh, over 2021 through 2023, a public information strategy, and the outreach and engagement and focus groups, um, helping us build consensus on common themes, vision, guiding principles. We have to do an inventory of our assets and infrastructure. Um, we'll talk about our aspirations and goals as a community. We need to this is a very key part of this. We want to find a partner that will help us um, coordinate with the village and county comprehensive plans. Um, and of course, the next important pieces are the implementation plan, the monitoring and evaluation plan, help us with the drift, draft written report. Um, whoever we work with on the comp side of things perhaps will be engaged with us. And, um, you know, make sure that we're ready to, to um, deliver this. Um, at the end of the process, and we and present it, you know, really publicly. We are going to be engaging and of uh, 12 to 15 members of the Comprehensive Plan Committee as sort of steering members. And we did circulate this document to the membership, the membership that is almost 70 people, for feedback and received some. Um, so I hope that's that's helpful. And um, if there are any other questions, please. Please let me know. Okay. Anyone else? Sarah, did you want to add anything? Are we good? No, I think Heather gave a great summary. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. And um, now we'll move on to uh, the item 10, which is a presentation. Oh, wait, we got to make a motion to it. So I make a motion make to a motion. authorize the supervisor to um, release this letter of oh, all right. request for letters. All right. And I'll second the motion. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. I, I wasn't trying to avoid it. I just forgot it. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> um, now we can move on to the uh, item 10, which is the presentation of the preliminary budget. Um, I'll give a quick summary. Uh, Caitlin gave an overview already that the Finance Committee, uh, Caitlin, Sarah, and I met with Ann on Friday. And that was a, uh, we banged out an hour. We really let, put a lot of stuff in an hour, but we couldn't get it all done. So we uh, met again yesterday. Is that Tuesday, I think? And uh, again, we went more than an hour uh, and we made uh, some preliminary um, changes from the uh, tentative budget to the preliminary budget, which uh, we emailed you those changes. I think you all have those as well as some open items that um, of course, as again, Caitlin mentioned, the um, Magnan Farm Sewer District was a, another example. Uh, we have to wait on, on those items. Um, so this is, again, a still a work in progress. Um, uh, Matt put together the 
the new numbers, which I also sent out to everyone um, re with the uh, budget, fiscal budget that's available for the public. And um, there was, uh, we did have some adjustments again with the, with the fund balance. Um, but as I said, it's still a work in progress. And as Elaine has pointed out, we are going to do what we can to get below the head tax cap between now and um, uh, December, November. Uh, when is it, Ann? December? <laughs> What's the final date we have to uh, finalize that budget? Is it the week after the election? November 18th. What is it? 18th of November? Thank you. Uh, Before Thanksgiving. Right, and we also need to have a public hearing on the preliminary budget, um, which I believe is going to be at our next board meeting, the 28th. Correct. Okay. Do, uh, now, do we need a motion to set that public hearing today? Yes, and I'd make a motion to set the public hearing for 640 on um, December 28th because we've got a continuation of a different one first. Oh, right. October 28th. I'm sorry, October 28th. Thank you, Karen. Can't go backwards in time. <laughs> do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any, any further discussion on uh, the preliminary, Sarah? Did you want to touch on anything or Anne? Or I actually just want to convey our appreciation to Anne Oot for her work on in uh, between Friday and Tuesday. She got a lot done, so. That's what you do on a four-day weekend, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you, Ann. You know, very appreciative. All right, uh, so we have a motion. We've seconded. All in favor? Aye. Okay, opposed? And carried. And again, the, uh, the this will be available, right, uh, Allison, to the public? Yes. Did you, did you adopt the preliminary budget as presented? Um, do we wait until... So you would... Ad you adopt the preliminary budget as presented, and then any changes that you make between now and when the budget is finalized, you do by way of motion. After the public hearing. After the mm -hmm. public hearing. So we don't need to do that now then. No, no, no. You, uh, Allison's right. You need to adopt the preliminary okay. budget. Okay, all right. So we'll need a motion for that. Okay, I'll make a motion to adopt the preliminary budget. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. From one year to the next, you know, and one thing we noted is that uh, the preliminary came up a lot earlier this year than it did last year because of the changes on the calendar. So, all right. Um, all right, very good. So we can move right on to our super highway superintendent, Rob Cushing. What do you have for us, Rob? Not a lot, Ed. Um, just want to ask the residents for their patience next week there. I know a lot of the residents have been bringing brush out back to the facility. Um, we're actually going to be doing a little bit of work on our parking lot back there, trying to uh, replace some asphalt around the salt shed. It's kind of come come apart pretty good here, so uh, over the last few years. So, uh, you know, if the residents kind of just be patient with us, I know maybe slow down a little bit, give us, give us a little help there in the back of the building. We uh, started doing some of the work back there today, and believe it or not, it was it was a lot of people running back and forth there, and uh, we actually had to shut the gate there for a little while. So. Um, I just want to make sure that everyone understands. Hopefully, uh, with the weather next week, we'll hopefully get it done there Monday or Tuesday. Um, but just if they'd be patient with us. Other than that, Ed, I'm good tonight. Very good. Do we wanna, Rob, do we want to put a, um, a notice on Facebook if we haven't already? Uh, we haven't. Heather, it's probably a good idea. I'll talk with Allison there. Um, okay. It's kind of weather, weather permitting there. You know, I don't want to put a definite date, but maybe early part of next week, we could just uh, put something out there. So. Yeah, because people will talk about it on next door and then someone will say, go to the town Facebook page and then that'll, that'll help. <laughs> oh, that'd be great, Heather. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Very good. Uh, Randy, do you have anything for us tonight? Uh, yeah. In the last probably year, we've had inquiries regarding ducks, chickens, um, et cetera. Our code, can certain zones have them, can, can not have them? Um, how do we have to have them, et cetera? After going through the different sections that are applicable, there's an awful lot of ambiguity in our definitions. We have terms in the zoning, terms in the animal control section that just 
contradict each other a little bit or overlap each other. Um, so what, what I'm looking to do, and, I, and I'd like to um, have the board give some feedback of kind of what direction the board wants to go in regarding these issues. Because um, I think that we have to redo some of these definitions and redo it and make it very clear to, to the public when they actually read this of whether they can have a chicken or a duck or a fowl or you know what is a domestic animal, uh, an exotic animal, that kind of stuff, and make it very easy for them to understand whether you can or you cannot. Having said that, we can't or I can't write something unless I know the direction the town board wants to go into of allowing certain things in certain zones on it. So as I'm gathering information and doing the research on this, um, we've, got to, we've got to spell out some different definitions because like I said, they do overlap between DEC's definition, um, Black's law de definitions. So we kind of get some overlapping and ambiguity, which makes it very difficult for people to understand. Um, so in the process of me starting to go through all of this and, and making it very clear, I, I kind of need some feedback um, from the board as to what direction you want me to go in uh, regarding these issues. And then I can write something applicable that will be very clear to the people. We're all excited. <laughs> there, no one has been this excited about anything else tonight. Everyone's like, I'll talk about ducks. <laughs> <laughs> ducks, chickens, <laughs> animal husbandry. Sarah had first, though. I got to give it to Sarah. Go ahead, Sarah. Um, actually, I'm going to defer to Elaine, who actually has chickens. See? Yes, I have seven chickens. As far as I know, they were allowed. There was nothing in our code saying they were not allowed. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> this is great. So, I mean, I think this is comprehensive planning, too, because I think we need to, you know, one of the things that um, we've talked about, we've touched on, I think, as a board, is a little bit about the agricultural exemptions and we want to understand where agricultural activity is happening, for example, on, in our community a little bit better and what production, because um, honestly, if I want, not only want people to be able to enjoy physically just animal husbandry or having animals, right, or having species or whatever it is, but how it intersects with sustainability and also how it inter intersects with sort of small business. Um, because if somebody wants to start selling um, eggs or if they want to start selling honey or you name it, um, that's interesting. It's an interesting thing to think about. And, and so agricultural production, even on a smaller scale in small farms, vegetable gardens, whatever, and how pollinators intersect the whole nine yards. So in short, very excited. I think we can include it. If you have short-term needs, we could come up maybe with some shorter term gu guidelines and, and, and have interim steps if we needed to, if anything was urgent, Randy, I would suggest, but let's make sure we, we pull it into the comprehensive land um, use planning process. So if, if they well, need any, was, yeah. But when this stuff was written, it was, uh, times were a little bit different. And now everybody in all neighborhoods, even including villages, they want certain things, chickens, ducks, for people that have uh, handicapped children, um, it's therapy. It, it, it's, a, it's a prescribed therapy for these people. Um, so we've just got to kind of decide. I mean, if you look at our de definition domestic animals on it, and then you look at domestic household pets, which we don't even have a definition for, it'll scare you some of the things that it says you can have in your house. Uh, you wouldn't put that on your, your back lawn in a farm, but some of this stuff is applicable for your house. On it. So we've kind of got to address the times of now on it. Uh, maybe chickens are a little bit different than ducks or cattle or you know, whatever the case is. But I think it's time that we address this. Um, it's just a question of what direction does the board want to go in with it. And I, can, I think we I can all support that, Randy. So I, I think we would be happy to help you with language areas. And yeah. there are other model codes that we could follow from other communities. But what I would like to do also is if we could have maybe a, a two week period in between town board meetings and open it up to the public, but let's get their opinion and see how they feel about this. You know, you might get a 50 50 split. You might, we don't know, but let's see what they have to say about, um, you know, chickens and cattle and goats and everything else. 
Uh, in this way, we'll have your opinion, we'll have the public's opinion, and then we'll write something that actually coincides with all of us uh, to the current times. There are... What about the DEC, Randy, with their guidelines and coordinating with the villages too? Um, I know they have taken this into consideration. Or... The DEC basically takes a hands-off approach because it's all regulated pretty much by the entity itself. Like the town will have completely different codes to the villages on, on what they right. can and cannot do on it. But some of our town residents are clustered together just like the villages are. Yeah. So we've kind of got to yeah. find out which, which way you want to go with it because what might be applicable in one neighborhood, that same zoning in another area might not be appropriate. Yeah. So that's something that we kind of... It's complex. I can we're... see this very to be a complex situation. So Sarah, this sounds like the uh, planning process committee is alive and well still. And this is probably <laughs> where this will be uh, discussed, I imagine. I mean, that's the best place to start, I think. Yeah, but I, I think, so I think planning process can pick this up. Randy is a member of that group. Yeah. Um, but then I think he's specifically asking for some kind of community input mechanism. So I, I think we can work on that sort of at the front end and then that will give him guidance on how to proceed um, with a draft and then we can have a public hearing on a draft. But I, I think we should get some public input first. Yeah, you'd be surprised Sarah, how many people that will, aren't sure where if they're in the town or the villages anyway. So this will help clear some of that up as well. I'm happy to work on that as well. You need Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Sure, um, we could, it, it's really interesting and it might be kind of a good case study for comprehensive planning and for sustainable manliness because it there's all sorts of implications how they're it's beneficial with ticks to have chickens and like there's it can really be helpful and it can be a hindrance also to the environment if you're not doing it properly so there's It'll be interesting to hear the feedback, but admittedly, when Randy called me about this this morning, I've been looking forward to this all day. This is when my life is like the show Parks and Rec, and I just look forward to it all day. <laughs> all day, Kayla, that's true. Really <laughs> Are we calling this the Chicken Commission? <laughs> <laughs> no, it has to be a committee, the Chicken Committee. The Club Committee, something. Uh, chicken and duck. Hey, Randy, Jamie and I are working on a similar situation in another community, so I can, we can share some of this information with you. We've got some framework that might fit right into this. Oh, great. But, but, you're, but you're right. I, I think Randy hits the nail on the head. You know, times have changed and there are a lot of different issues that come up with these. these. Well, I remember when the village of Fayetteville was considering their um, rules about chickens. Um, I remember reading them notes from the minutes and people were just really concerned about roosters and, and things like that. So, I mean, I understand that we, it's about you know, who do you want to be your neighbors and what kind of noises do they make in addition to everything else that they, you know, the byproducts of the neighbors, uh, human or otherwise, I guess. And too. people want chickens now. They get the, it's cool. It's like a hipster thing. Like, I mean, look at Elaine. She's hipster. She's got chickens. That's what we want now. It, uh, it helps against ticks too. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're a hipster and helpful. Yeah. All well, right. I just, uh, Randy, I mean, did you have anything else, Randy? And then, or Doug, did you guys? No, I was just saying that a lot of this falls on the interpretation of the code enforcement officer. I, where I want to take it. I want to take it off of that and put <laughs> it kind of in black and white. So if somebody reads it, they know for sure which way they can do certain things. That's all. Yeah, because Randy, also I understand that if we change it pretty broadly, it could put a lot of pressure for you, pressure on you for that enforcement, but also or, or on the permitting side, which creates a. a, a mechanism that we have to support as a government too. So I understand we need to think about that. Randy, do you get a lot of people that complain about people having chickens next door or ducks? Weekly. Or Weekly. People are complaining about the next door chicken. Weekly. Because in a lot of those complaints come from they're not fenced in and the chickens are running down the street on their property. They're up on their decks. And we're dealing with one right now, actually. Um, so yeah, don't laugh, but it, 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 it's true. So I did see a random chicken on FM Road. I, I understand. I can only imagine. Randy, if you're talking about Poolsbrook Road, good luck. Okay. So, so there's, just to clarify, there's chickens running down the street and people are upset about it. Understandably so. I'd be upset if there were chickens 
I, I try to dodge them when I'm on my bike. So, all right, uh, let's move along here, okay? We can go on and on with tickets. Uh, Doug, did you have anything at all tonight or, or not? Wait, no, uh, Ed, I'm sorry. I just have one more question. Did you ask the chicken why it crossed the road? <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> um, all right, Tim, do you have anything for us tonight? On that note. <laughs> yeah. No? I'm one I'm okay. Nothing better than chickens from Tim. Okay. No, we were talking about ducks today. It was... It was a duck issue today, so. And I know we've been going back, and I know you've been having some internet stuff, I think, but uh, anything you wanted to uh, cover tonight at all, or are we pretty good with everything? Dan? Oh. Okay. okay. Are, are we we're out of order here? So, okay. Yeah, I went to, yeah, I went to you before I went to the uh, town clerk. So, sorry. Oh, okay. Because I'll be quick. Um, Yes, I think you all have a copy of a resignation letter from Mary Esposito. Most of us know her as Mitzi Esposito. Uh, Mitzi has resigned her position in the tax uh, receiver's office, uh, effective 917. Uh, Mitzi, for those of you that don't know, Mitzi uh, was full time in the assessment office from 1979 to 2004 when she retired. And then she came back part time uh, as a deputy uh, tax receiver. So. Just uh, would appreciate um, a motion uh, accepting her resignation and for her many years of service to the town. So I would happy to make that. Go ahead, motion. Karen. Go ahead. Um, we uh, appreciated her, and she was always great to work with. A wonderful face for the town, and I'll make a motion that we accept that resignation. Do I have a second? A second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. And uh, Karen, I echo your sentiment on that. She was just a, she's a wonderful person and, uh, you know, uh, just knew what she was doing and been doing it a long time. And I think she had been in the assessor's office. Is that right, Ann? Before she went mm -hmm. over there. So it's a tremendous amount of experience in the, in the town of Manly. So thank you. Extremely, extremely loyal. And um, Mr. Supervisor, too, um, you know, that is a position um, that is vacant now that is imperative that we um, not replace Mitzi because that can never be done, but fill that position with an extremely um, competent uh, individual. And um, I know Lori has been um, doing a few interviews and um, looking at some applications she has set out and she has decided on an individual. Um, she is a retired postal worker that is accustomed to the fast pace um, that is required in that office, the volume that is done as well as um, putting the town right in the forefront. Mm -hmm. So um, it's my recommendation um, that this employee be hired. Um, she would work no more than six months out of the year. Um, and uh, also to a salary of up to $16 an hour, a rate up to $16 an hour. Of course, this would be no benefits. Um, uh, the big rush now, of course, um, is getting her completely trained for the next um, tax season. And um, anyway, um, I, I don't think we need a motion for that, do we? Um, yeah, I, um, we, we, we uh, I, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. I, I would suggest if we're going to hire someone, we do a motion um, to hire them. Yeah, my only thought, Tim, is because Lori's an elected, um, her, but, it's, but the rate, the pay rate. Yeah, we, we have to, we have to set the pay rate and we have to. That's what we need to vote on, I think. Right the now. hours. Yeah. And so, is it the same as what Mitzi, uh, was is that what's in the budget? I guess that's my question, Ann. 
Uh, and that's the other thing, Ed, this is in the budget. This is not a new position by any means. Um, it has been put forward in, in um, your budget okay. on the department head. Well, you know, so, we, so go ahead. So I would like to make a motion um, that the town approve uh, this part-time position um, to uh, be no more than um, six months and no more than $16 per hour. Okay. It's something that we should, because we were, in, just in terms of putting together the budget, we were thinking about some options to discuss with Karen um, and in just in consideration of the, of, of different options for the tax department to make sure that, that everyone has the support that they need. But I, you know, I didn't know this was going to be discussed tonight and I don't feel prepared to, like, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's fine, but I'd like to just talk about it a little bit more before we vote on it. Because I didn't know we were going to, I, this is the first I'm hearing about it. I don't feel comfortable voting on this. I agree. Like there's no notice. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know we've been discussing it. You're right, Caitlin. And, uh, uh, we haven't, you know, we're just getting all the information now. Uh, I think our concern again was the January, you know, and the fact that <laughs> as we've agreed, Sarah, people are still coming in and they're not mailing <laughs> their taxes, you know. So uh, I think January is going to be just like it was uh, for the school paying year for the town budget or town uh, taxes. So, I mean, we could certainly. Um, uh, have a little further discussion until the next meeting uh, so that we have a little more um, in, in our um, uh, information that, you know, Karen, you and, uh, you know, uh, Lori can discuss and based on some of the budget things we discussed as well. And so if you want to wait, we can wait till the next board meeting to have more information. Yeah, Karen, Sarah was going to reach out to you. This was just discussed yesterday at our budget meeting and to see if you wanted to you and Sarah kind of representing just our discussion yesterday, um, but since she was um, certainly there and a part of that. And then you as the liaison could go and meet with Lori and discuss the different options, some ideas we had. And then if that's what she wants to do, we can look at it more and then vote next board meeting. Oh, good. Okay. She'll look forward to that. Thank yeah, you. We had some really interesting ideas, um, but we want to make sure she's supported. That's been a really big priority of mine. I just want to make sure she knows all the information that we discussed yesterday too. And, and I know things will probably be winding down a little bit by the next week, I think with her. So she'll have- Oh more. no, she has 5,000 escrow accounts. She's got to account for. Between now and two weeks? Yes, the end of next week. Okay, so- I worked two days in that office last week. Oh my goodness, it's an eye opener. Yeah. All right, so I, I guess if, if uh, you could convey to Lori that we totally support her through this process and we'll connect for better um, information. Okay, she'll be glad to hear that, Sarah. Thank you very much. Okay, very good. Uh, good uh, thank you very much for, for that, everyone. Now, um, uh, step back here for the town clerk. I, sorry I jumped over you, Allison, but do you have anything for us tonight? No, how's your training session going, okay? He, he left, so oh, okay. <laughs> he stayed for the he's, public hearings, and then I he's trained. Yeah, <laughs> training sessions going well when they're like, I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, he's he has to learn to stay for the whole thing, you know. So, um, all right, and we'll go on to the chief. What do you have for us tonight, uh, Mike? I just had one item, Supervisor. Uh, the police department is looking forward to and welcoming our next uh, review from the commission. Oh yeah, accreditation for law enforcement agencies. So, just want to make sure the board aware uh, aware of the fact that uh, we'll be going through a virtual onsite for CALEA accreditation, October twenty sixth through twenty eighth. Uh, as part of the process, we've already published a public notice, uh, and uh, it allows the public to comment on the police department, uh, both in writing directly to the commission. Um, and we also are going to be having a call-in session so folks can call in uh, uh, to a specific number on the 27th uh, as part of that process. And then uh, there's also going to be a, a, a virtual public hearing that we're going to hold uh, as part of that process on the, the 27th as well uh, in the afternoon time. So that public notice has gone out to 
almost every single entity in the town to let our community know that they're welcome to comment on their police department as it's related to the uh, 350 standards that we follow every single year on CLIA accreditation. So I just want to make sure that was known to the board. And of course, uh, prior to the end of the process, the, uh, the, the assessors will let me know uh, if, uh, if they're going to recommend us to the commission for a, a reaccreditation and I will then convey those, those thoughts and that process to the board. Very good. Thank you, Chief. Anything else? That's good. All right. And um, wish you all the uh, best of the luck in the world for that. I know that you have our support um, and, and um, you'll get some good comments, I'm sure. <laughs> all right. Uh, Tom Board. Okay. We're moving right along here. So, uh, Sarah, do you want to um, uh, start out? Thank you. Um, so, over the past couple of weeks, um, we've already discussed a number of the items that I've been working on. Um, but I did want to bring up that we are meeting monthly with the town of Sullivan with regard to the Salt Springs Water Project. I want to thank uh, the highway department for digging some test holes and surprise to absolutely no one, there's a lot of rock along Salt Springs Road. Um, so we just were able to measure that a little bit. So thank you for doing that. Um, we also sent postcards to some people along uh, North Eagle Village and McClunthan who were not included in the 2016 sampling, just to let them be aware that this is a possibility. And I wanna make clear to everyone that nothing has been decided finally and that there is no route predetermined. And all of this is really uh, awaiting public input um, based on those um, postcards. And uh, we are planning a virtual public here meeting, public informational meeting that will be open for several days. So we, people don't have to show up at a particular moment in time, but they can participate at their convenience to learn more about it and to uh, gather and we'll announce more about that and at next, um, the next meeting, the 28th, we expect it would go live about then and be live for the first couple weeks of November. So that um, will be a forthcoming um, piece of information. The other thing I wanted to share, which is uh, water on the other side, uh, we're also um, meeting with members of the first of the second and third uh, drainage district about stormwater management. Um, those meetings are scheduled for next week, and um, we have. Uh, I want to thank the clerk's office for sending out about I don't know 2,000 letters that they sent out, um, and to uh, the planning and development um, department, highway department. Uh, clerk's department and myself for answering people who got the letter and then immediately called and asked for information rather than waiting for the meeting that they got invited to. So um, we are hopeful of having a lot more resident engagement with their stormwater management and better understanding of how the district works. So I think this is overall a positive, um, but it's been a little bumpy and we request the patience of the residents who might be feeling uh, that somehow that something came out of the blue sky at them. Um, that we are trying to convey information in a manageable manner. And uh, if they have any questions at all, they, they should feel free to call and somebody will speak with them. Excellent, Sarah. Thank you for that update on, on both issues. Thank you. Uh, uh, John, do you have anything for us today? Uh, I'll keep it short. We, as I guess as of today, are officially done relaunching our new Facebook page. Uh, so if you're watching this, it's more than likely that you're watching it on Facebook. So great job for finding the page. Uh, just keep in mind, um, you know, it's going to take a while to move everybody over to the new one. And the reason we're doing it is for some very technical issues behind the scenes with how the original page was set up. Um, so bear with us as we try to get everybody over to that new page. Um, but just everybody who knows about it, just make sure you're you know, letting folks know sharing that information so that <clears throat> ideally, once we have some communication specialists on board with us, we'll have a, you know, fully moved over to the new page, but that's all I've got. Okay, very good, John. Elaine, you're up. Hi, thank you. Um, so the Public Safety Advisory Committee is meeting um, tomorrow and we are, we have collected qu questions and ideas and comments from the community. We've gathered those all together um, and the police will be doing an informational presentation um, next Thursday, uh, October 22nd at 6.30. Um, it will be on Facebook and Zoom, so please join us for that, or you can watch it at a later date. Um, it should just 
hopefully get, uh, answer a lot of those questions um, and provide a lot of more information. And we're looking forward to hearing from uh, our officers. So, thank you. Thank you. And uh, uh, Karen. Yeah, as mentioned before, I want to commend uh, Lori and Sharon for having um, work just completing the tax school tax season. Um, it was more challenging this year, particularly keeping the people um, distanced and um, it worked very, very well. Um, but they they didn't receive as many mail-ins as they thought they would, which was interesting. People still like to come into our tax office and pay their taxes. And they had 15,000 people in three days. I mean, it was, it's just amazing. And when I was uh, actually in the office, hands-on working, the amount of phone calls this year was very interesting, particularly um, with home sales, uh, attorneys calling in, wanting to know are the taxes paid. So it was, it was a lot more cumbersome, um, particularly this year, and they did an outstanding job. And of course, Sharon was handling um, the trash and brush sit situation too. So, you know, uh, we commend both of them and really rely on Lori's 25 plus years of experience because it's it's quite a feat that they do and I want to acknowledge them and thank them both and keeping the town safe in our residents. Um, I also, uh, Mr. Supervisor, just wanted to give you a brief update on the deer management plan. Um, we have been, of course, in conversation with Mayor Olson and they, again, the Village of Fayetteville would like to coordinate with the town with the intermunicipal agreement with the deer management um, plan as we have in the past two years, three years. Um, the county, however, has not met yet. They were going to meet a month ago. Um, they weren't able to gather. They are meeting um, tomorrow tomorrow actually. And um, just we'll have some insight um, on them, uh, from them as well as getting approval and to um, what the county can do this year. I've, I've spoken with um, Mr. Burtis and Mr. Holmquist and of course, and they too think it's very important that this program continues. And I've also heard from a few residents as well that uh, the deer are approaching. <laughs> so I will keep you posted. That's where we are. Thank you, Karen. And I know that, uh, yeah, we have had other requests about different locations mm -hmm. people are interested in. I think mm -hmm. County Legislator Burtis, is he chairing that? Okay. He's on the deer committee. Oh, okay. For the county. The county. Oh, all right. For the county. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And then I just had, I, uh, if you've noticed all the holiday decorations out front, the town um, has coordinated with the Greater Chamber of uh, Fayetteville and Malleus um, to participate in this town-wide um, event where several businesses are um, decorating as well as municipalities to celebrate the season for all the residents to enjoy. So. I appreciate uh, our recreation department taking the lead on that. It looks very nice. Yeah. Doesn't it? It looks great. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, and Caitlin, how are we doing tonight? Got some more? Um, aside from chickens and ducks, I, um, my, I, would, I would like to thank Anne. She's been so great in helping me in learning the budget process. So thank you, Anne. I really appreciate all of your help in answering my 20,000 questions over these last several weeks, especially the last few days, and for working all weekend on that. Certainly um, applaud your commitment to the town. Um, shouldn't have to work on a weekend. So we appreciate that you're doing that, uh, going above and beyond. Um, and uh, last week, um, or no, it was two weeks ago, we had Sustainable Manlius on October 1st. 
And that was our first formal meeting since uh, before the pandemic. Um, we had, we've done a bunch of stuff on environmental sustainability over these last several months. And I've been updating the committee, but when it became clear, we weren't gonna be able to meet in person again. It's such a large group. There's like 40 people on the list. I just didn't know how we were gonna run a Zoom met meeting with that many people, but we scheduled one and um, we had a really great attendance. Just under 20 people came and the focus of the committee going forward is going to be the pledge that we took on Earth Day to become a climate smart community. And uh, there's also word that there might be some new funding coming out for clean energy communities. So um, probably at the next town board meeting, we'll have some resolutions uh, that I'll be putting forward to help us with the um, to help us with that. And so if we qualify for that, we could very well get grants. Um, Manoa's grant that they got for clean energy communities a couple years ago was for $100,000. So it's something really worth looking at. And um, we could use, we would be able to use that money to advance environmental sustainability in the community. So that'll be my priority going forward. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. Okay, very good. Thanks for staying on top of all that. And Heather, last but not least. Yeah, I've got nothing um, other than to, to you know, echo what I said earlier um, about our event this Sunday at 3 p.m. We'll send some details out to everyone um, f f on our history. I hope everyone will tune in or listen later. And also regarding the Tree Commission, um, I don't want to spill the beans yet, but yet I please look out for information coming from the Tree Commission about a wonderful grant um, that one of our members um, led on and we are going to be able to partner with the Village of Manlius um, um, and, and we'll announce that grant. It should be something that we're able to, to um, see the result of in early, or in early to mid-November, so quite soon. Very good, thank you. Um, and uh, I just have a, a, a few items here. I don't think I've missed anyone. Uh, first one, of course, is the supervisor's report, which uh, you all uh, have uh, hopefully seen that was on the, um, the uh, agenda items listed. And uh, so we need a uh, motion to uh, sign that and accept the uh, supervisor's report. Your supervisor, since I did read it, I will make a motion to accept your report. I'll second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Yeah, I think it was, that's John. That's fine. John. Yeah. Okay. John seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oppose? And Carrie, uh, two other quick items. I don't know if any, any of you remember this. I think it was pre COVID, uh, but we had approved a run for the fallen route to go, people are gonna run through the town, I, I think that uh, on 92, but it was, uh, I received a, um, a nice thank you note in the, in the mail from them uh, to the town of Manlius, a big thank you. And uh, just our continued support of the New York run for falling, for falling and um, allowing our team to use our parking lot is a hero marker location. So um, it's, they're able to continue the mission to honor and remember over 860 fallen military heroes and their families. So they just want to thank us for being part of that and hope to partner again um, uh, in 2021. So it was really a nice surprise when I received this. And really the, the last thing I just wanted to touch on, and it's been a while since we've talked about this and uh, I know that, um, the county executive is, is starting to be seen a little bit more now, but it is, uh, of course, now becoming the flu season. And it's continued to be the uh, Chinese virus season known as COVID-19. And I think we may be, you know, hope, hopefully not too badly, but I think we're going to be seeing some increase again because of the weather changing and so on. So I just want to remind the community to stay focused, which I would say we have done an excellent job in the town of Malleus in doing that, and to maintain our you know, social distancing as well as if you can't do that, then please wear a mask and just, just be careful out there and, and, and uh, cautionary and, um, and get your flu shot <laughs> on top of that. So that's, I just wanted to finish with that uh, to remind everyone it's not, that hasn't ended yet. So. Uh, yeah, just one quick comment. The, um, the, the phrase Chinese virus has been 
um, thought by many in the community to be disparaging towards Asian people in the country. And it's really not, um, it's not a term I'm very comfortable with in describing COVID. Um, so I wanted to- Even though they use it for the Asian flu? Yeah, but it's not um, the, I, I, I would agree with Caitlin under, and understood there was no malintent. I, but I think that coronavirus, the official CDC term, if, if we could um, use that in the notes would be, or recognize it would be, would be what I would want to use for that. Well, I would agree to disagree, but that's fine. We can do that. So anyway, so let's move on and we're all done with the meeting tonight. So we need a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn, Mr. Supervisor. I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you, everyone. A very Thank good you. Good night. Thank you. Nice job, everybody.